<laughs> Good luck. Let's bring out our next guest. <laughs> Russell Brand, Britain's sexiest and most controversial comic, was always destined for stardom. From his acting debut in a school production of Bugsy Malone, he broke into Hollywood stealing scenes in the smash hit comedies, bedtime stories and forgetting Sarah Marshall. Hailed as the most exciting comedian of his generation, he's picked up awards like Stand Up Comedian of the Year, Best TV Performer and Shagger of the Year three years running. Since then, this cunningly linguist has hosted the MTV Video Music Awards, written a number one best-selling autobiography and released his own DVD. Now it's Australia's turn to catch him live and scandalous. Ah, oh, please welcome Russell Brand! Look at you. I didn't think anyone could come on this show and top the attire of these two gentlemen. You have done it in space. One of us has already taken our hat off to you, and I do the same. So. <laughs> yes, you look rather underdressed, the pair of you. <laughs> <laughs> so they didn't even make an effort. Welcome. You landed, uh, what, only a few hours ago. Would that be right? Yeah. I mean, it's correct, but it ain't right, because I'm exhausted. <laughs> You must be. Now, how do you go with, with jet lag and things like that, landing in a foreign country? Well, it is, Rove. I ain't allowed to take drugs no more, so, like, jet lag's the closest I get to a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> do you, now, do you, have, do you have problems with, like... We're uh, notorious for customs and things like that. I've seen the TV show with the cameras where they yeah. wait at custom stops for people. How do you find it when you get it's in? It's not easy, mate. People think I look suspicious. <laughs> I get in bothered by some beagle when I got here today. Yes. <laughs> Lovely little thing it was, but I thought it smelt so much of its own ass. <laughs> How it could detect drugs is a mystery to me. Do you know the thing is though, most of those dogs are there for fruit. That's what their biggest They're fruit dogs. Yeah, it's more than don't don't bring yeah, bring heroin if you want, but just yeah, if you hide it in an apple, they'll get you. I wish I'd known that before I come. <laughs> It's very difficult to get that apple into my bottom. <laughs> now, I, I, uh, I did uh, enjoy uh, seeing your uh, award accolades. Now, Shagger of the Year, you have won three years running. Yeah. Do they, have, they announced, <laughs> have they announced this year's yet? I've only just got the last one, mate. Like, it's only recently it's announced around Christmas, so I've only just received my most recent shagging award. Please don't put any more pressure on me. <laughs> I've just got that trophy. I can't... Does it put... I'm just a bit weird, cos the thumb's pointing right at me. <laughs> <laughs> Once the thumb has decided... <laughs> well, and all this talk of having me spooning other guys... He has a reputation. Be careful, <laughs> that. I, I want to know, Russell, who awards Shagger of the Year? I mean, is it do they get a backlog of ladies who've spent some sexy time with you, or uh, <laughs> what? How do you get it? I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. This accolade is rather arbitrary. There is <laughs> no real credit in it, and frankly, I'm rather. I, I would rip an award like that. Well, I d must say, Rovi. I don't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. No, of course, enjoy sexual intercourse, as it is my biological imperative as a human being. <laughs> But, uh, you know, when my mum, like, when I win an award, I ring my mum and go, I've won an award, mum. Oh, what is it, darling? It's Shagger of the Year. <laughs> and she has to pretend to be proud. I think you should be, though. I think, you know, I would think if I was a parent and I had a child and they had done very well in the at bedroom shagging. At shagging. <laughs> I would enough. say, good on you. Yeah, but you don't want your mother to envisage you expertly shagging a series of women. <laughs> It's the expertly part that actually sells it for me. <laughs> now, you've actually, and again, not wanting to sound negative in any way, shape or form, but you've also, prior to this, been in, in rehab for sex, which I find fascinating. Yeah, it ain't, though, mate. Cos uh, what it is, is there's no sex allowed while you're in there. Is they there... frown on it. Yeah, but how do they, how do they monitor it? Is there, is there like, a, a set of rules? Yeah. How do they implement it? They won't let you... Right, here's what's not allowed in Sexual Addiction Rehabilitation Centre. 
Sex. That's, that's number one. You do that, you're out. Masturbation. Kinky sex. Go and tell someone, just say, excuse me, I was just thinking something ever so kinky. And say, <laughs> what was it? And then he's like, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> but it's, it's like cold turkey. But with cigarettes, you know, they wean you off to, you know, two a day and then a patch and it goes from there. So why don't they adopt that type of method with, I don't know... I wish I knew, Andy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I'm tackling the problem of addiction, I will come to you and your buccaneer <laughs> chump. <laughs> because, frankly, it was an ordeal. Because just in our, in, our, in our sex rehab centre, it's a bit more relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, yeah. Look at better. the state of your fucking I know. <laughs> So long as you don't try to smuggle fruit into the sex rehab, you're fine. Right, yeah. Well, Here they just of... send you on a boat over, over the Tasmania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to go cold turkey, we can take you on a boat. <laughs> yeah, of course, well, the first uh, most people would have heard of you as, uh, here in Australia would have been through uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. That was, uh, how was that as an experience for you? Big film, uh, feature film, Hollywood uh, breakthrough, that kind of thing. It's nice. Yeah? <laughs> it's nice to be in a film, mate, but you're in Hawaii and uh, after a while the relentless beauty of paradise, <laughs> it's boring. <laughs> how, did the, how did the Americans take to you? They like old Russ, that's who I am. Yeah. Uh, they, think I'm, they think I'm nice on account of, you know, I'm quite English and that and I carry on and I'm a bit cheeky. They're very pleasant towards me, they give me some money. <laughs> so were they, were they aware of you when you, when you came on set? Because I, I've... Uh... They were, they see me coming, they went, here he is, look. <laughs> It could Watch be him. someone He's else. Do it could some be... acting. Because I've heard that. Because um, uh, being a fan of the movie, I've seen the DVD, and they say that the character was pretty much as you walked into the audition. It was just you being you, and they said, "Well, that's that's got to be the character." That's right. The character was supposed to be very, very different. He was supposed to be an author, a sexually frustrated author. I went in there, thusly. They said, "Can you play a sexually frustrated author?" I merely grinned. <laughs> They said, well, you can be in this film if you want to. And I said, I would like that. And uh, <laughs> then, then that's what's happened. They changed it so that it was, like, either it's an insult to my inability to act or very flattering that they just <laughs> like me as I am. I don't know which yet. I take the flattering. It's take the flattering. Thing. Take it as a compliment. If you, we have the choice of how to perceive reality, which we clearly do, if there is no objective truth, then why not allow our perception to be coloured by endless beauty? Why should there's enough tyranny and pain in the world? Why not just see relentless this joy, right? Say a beagle comes near you, start sniffing you. You could think, well, that could be because of that apple I've got in my colon, <laughs> <laughs> or it could be because I'm a real Doctor Doolittle. Uh, Russell, are you ready for your final five? I don't. Know. You can do it. I'm absolutely fucking you. Oh, that's what happens if someone does that to me. Now I go like that. You know what? I wasn't ready. It's where I'm a gangster. I wasn't ready for it. When you grow up in a Compton, Los Angeles, you learn pretty quickly that if someone does that, to go like that. Is there a difference between that and that, though? Yes, there is. And if you do that to Snoop Dogg, he'll shoot you. Ah. <laughs> I, wasn't re I wasn't ready for it. I hadn't braced. And when you did it, I punched I myself in the face. I'm sorry about that. That's all right. That is as close as we'll ever get to a drive-by, as we are gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. Um, uh, number five. Have you ever been to an orgy? Yeah. <laughs> Enjoyable? It's not nice because uh, you know how people say never eat the peanuts at a bar, it'll have 20 types of food. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat any snack at an orgy. Yeah, There's a fact sheet after the show. <laughs> Number four, you've eaten ants. What do they taste like? Nothing. Like, Nothing, but they've got that assist. I was a child, don't like, it's not on the way in. When I was a tiny, <laughs> tiny child and I was all unhappy, I sometimes, to get attention, would eat an ant. I regret it now and I'd like to apologise to the ant community. <laughs> <laughs> I'm vegetarian now. Number, th number three, finish this sentence. The fastest way to a woman's heart is... Just go through the rib cage with a knife. <laughs> No, no, just through joy and the recognition of their eternal beauty. <laughs> Number two, what's the biggest lie you've ever told? Lies? Oh, hold well on. Oh, oh, God. <gasps> Some bad ones. I once claimed to be a Native American to impress a girl. Uh, another time, I claimed to have the HIV virus to get time off work. They're both <laughs> <laughs> 
Did you get the time off work? Yeah, I did, but they got a bit suspicious. They was fed up because it was like a language school, and I kept having it off with the students. They said, you want to stop doing that, mate? <laughs> <laughs> wasn't true, and I mean no disrespect. <laughs> Number one, uh, finally, your visual question. What's the first thing you think of when you see this? Oh. Oh. Well, I feel a little bit sorry for it. <laughs> it looks it's confused. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually smuggled the heroin in with an apple. <laughs> Well, there we go. Well, Russell is touring his stand-up show, Scandalous. All shows are sold out except this Saturday at the Palais in Melbourne. Big catch it. Very funny man. Pleasure to have him on, Russell Cheers, Brand, mate. everybody. Thank you very much for coming in.